to DAX Machina. Join us as we explore the mysteries of this world. Cryptids, monsters, macabre tales, and horror stories abound. Could they be true? Are monsters real? Good evening, folks, and thank you for joining us for another edition of DAX Machina. Joining me in the studio tonight is my brother from another mother, Robbie Rip Reigns, and our, everybody knows uh, knows my my, my pocket-sized buddy, Kerry Pocket Doc Davis from Dark Angel Medical. And joining us tonight is a very special guest, M.K. Davis. Yeah, uh, you, you guys, uh, I'm sure if you guys haven't heard from him, I don't think you know much about the Krypton world. Uh, he's he's as far as the Patterson Gimlin fo go, uh, Patterson Gimlin film goes, I would consider him probably the foremost authority on that film. Uh, and it, yeah, his his uh, his uh, website is listed in the in the uh, the links below the link below the the show. It's called the Davis Report. Uh, some of the breakdown videos on there are just absolutely incredible. But he's done a lot of research in an area called the Honey Island, down in uh, down in uh, Louisiana, which is famous for the Honey Island Swamp Monster. And that's what we're going to be talking about tonight. And uh, it's it's going to be a great time, folks. We have got a huge crowd already jumping in here. And it's just growing by the second. Uh, so I want to welcome MK to the show. Mr. Davis, thank you for joining us. We're so proud to have you back. Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Um, Honey Island has been a fa favorite subject of mine. I've, I've spent lots of time down there. Uh, some of it's been fruitful. Some of it not so fruitful. You know, it's uh, it, you're looking for a legend. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, if they were common, you, you would, you would, uh, this it, it would be solved already. Uh, so uh, you, you're trying to get lucky. You go down there and try to figure out something that will, you, some way to put yourself in a position to be lucky. Uh, and then, uh, then if you came face to face with them, maybe that not so lucky. <laughs> it's it, it's. It, it's got that reputation. I guess it would depict, uh, figure on what you uh, you de de decided would be lucky, because uh, you know some folks might be very thrilled to do it, but at the same time, the danger factor would probably be pretty high. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with the Honey Island Swamp Monster, back in 1963, a gentleman by the name of Harlan Ford recorded a a a, a, some, a section of eight millimeter video that didn't service service until until after his death, which I think was in 1980. But the, the video shows a, well, it's it's a really great video. I, I don't think we can show the video here because of copyright. Uh, but the uh, if you guys have not seen that video, The Honey Island Swamp, uh, you guys need to watch watch that video. It's a really compelling video. Uh, and it's not only spawned, a, you know, you know, a de a, you know, a couple of decades of researchers. It's also spawned a lot of other sightings in that area as well. MK, what first got you interested in The Honey Island Swamp Monster? Well, when I first heard about it, it was, uh, I heard about it on, uh, in search of, you know, with Leonard Nimoy mm -hmm. and he, they had a ep whole episode on it. Mm. And I thought to myself, I used to live down there. Uh, I, I thought to myself, well, you know, I, that's one of the places that are well within reach of me here. Uh, so, you know, it's something that I could effect or have an impact on uh maybe find the solution to it and uh so i decided to go down there and just uh it, it's it's been uh you know <laughs> you know a lot of times if you go and you, you start poking your nose in, in places you know uh you have to be careful what you wish for <laughs> you know uh i, I I went there and I hadn't, I didn't know anything about who to contact or anything. Uh, so I asked around and I was referred back to Dana Holyfield. And then I, 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 uh, I was got in a conversation with a guy at the gas station and he says, well, I know her and she's at a birthday party right now. He gave me the address. I went over there, Dana, I met her. You know, she told me all, filled me in about it. She referred me to some people who had seen it. 
Uh, so it just kind of grew from there, you know. Um, it, it's, it's, it's I'm like you guys. I I I like a good mystery and and you know things like that interest me. Uh, you know uh, something that is. Mr. Davis, we lost your audio, sir. Yeah. Okay. Can you hear me now? Oh, there, yep. Came back. There we, there we maybe, got it. Maybe getting soft on you. Okay. Uh, so uh, I, uh, I just began an, an odyssey. I just started making, keeping a presence down there. You know, whenever I could. And uh, I, I met Perry Ford, uh, Harlan Ford's brother. And he told me where the old camp was. So I went down in there and I located that area and you know, started kind of hanging out in there because that's where he saw it. Uh, and I went for the longest time. I, I bought a jet ski and went all up in the swamps, up in the, the island, the Holmes Bio that kind of splits the island. Uh just uh you know a jet ski don't you know you you can go in just a little bit of water and uh just made perfectly for that kind of thing um uh, but there again i didn't find anything for a long long time I, I i got a little bit discouraged and i decided that you know in my own mind that it just wasn't you know, uh, and so uh, as fast forward a uh, few years of, of inactivity, I sold my jet ski and and uh, my wife needed to go to New Orleans to stay with a friend in the hospital. So we went down there and and I dropped her off and. I decided to swing around by Honey Island, by the uh, by that area. It's near Lot One on the canal, and uh, I went out into the woods and I stayed off the trail. I decided not to go down to the main trails where people walked, uh, but rather to get off trail. And I walked upon. Lo and behold, uh, one of the tracks like Harlan Ford had uh, cast it. How big was it? Uh, it was bigger, way bigger than my foot. <laughs> uh, and I, I'm sitting here looking at it, and, and I had pretty much resigned myself to the fact that it wasn't real. And I know nobody set me up. Cause I didn't tell anybody else coming and I walk away from where everybody normally walks. So it, it was there. Uh, you know, you kind of rub your eyes and do a double take. Uh, so that, that made a, a big difference. And then I, I, I began to find a other sign in there. But what was strange about it was that uh, it wasn't in there all the time. It, the sign was only in certain times of the year. Uh, one would be like in November when hunting season began. This is all protected in there. Mm -hmm. So it's no hunting. Uh, so evidently it, it came over in there during hunting season. But well, you know, deer are smart enough to know when the hunting seasons are, and they move into the protected areas. There's no, no reason to think a an upright, you know, intelligent primate probably would be as well. Right, right. Uh, so, uh, and then it comes again in there around June, late May, June, mm -hmm. and and it stays for a few weeks, and then it goes back out. You won't see any sign at all. Uh, Derek Buckles had a question for you. He said the first yeah. reported sighting was in 1963. Have there been older sightings found from witness statements? You know, that's a good, good, uh, good point. I, I, I'm not really sure. I, I, only ones that I'm aware of is uh, the 
once reported by Harlan Ford, you know, as being the earliest. Uh, mm -hmm. He reported it back in 63. Uh, him and his friend Billy Mills walked upon. They, they, they had a camp in the woods, but you had to cross the canal to get to it. And so they had a boat, and the boat was loaded down with camping gear. And they were walking across this about maybe better part of a mile through the woods, uh, you know, to the river. And and they were had camping gear, you know, out the wazoo, and they walked upon it. And they said it was on all fours when they first saw it, and it was facing away from them, and they thought it was some kind of wild hog. And they looked at it a few seconds, and then it turned around and stood up and stared at them. And uh, they said it had huge amber-colored eyes. Uh, that was the thing that stood out the most on it. And it had a, a thick kind of a mane of hair around the neck. And and they uh, it took off running. And they went over there to where they had seen it, and they saw where it had come out of that tree. It had been up the tree, and it had come back down that tree and left you know, scuff marks and scratches on it. Um, so it, it, that was the first time that it was reported. And then uh, the Har uh, Harlan Ford reminds me of me. Uh, you know, he... He was stubborn about it, you know. Uh, he resisted the temptation to quit uh, because people, you know, mocked him. Yeah. Uh, so you know, he he eventually ends up with that film, uh, which is uh, it's pretty pretty decent film. It's about what you'd expect in thick brush. You know, you get little glimpses of it as it passes through. Uh, it's, you see enough of it that it, it fits a, you know, a certain mold that's very squatch-like mm -hmm. in the film. Uh, so you, you really, uh, you can't really see it well enough to tell if it has that mane of hair or anything. Right. Uh, I talked to a lady when I was down there about a month ago. Pardon? I didn't say anything. Oh, I heard something. Uh, I was down there about a month ago, and and this lady says that 20 years ago, what is this, some back talk or something? Back we might be catching a little interference. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Anyways, uh, she said that she had been going up to that same place, up up, up the canal, uh, at lot one, and she had they had their boat, you know, full of fishing gear, and they had through through people in it, and they saw what they thought was a muskrat swimming the river, swimming the canal, uh, and when they got up closer to it, it was way bigger than a muskrat, and when it came up on the bank. It stood up, and she said it was every bit of seven feet tall. And it stared at him, and then it got down on all fours and ran into the forest. And guess where it ran? It ran into the same woods where I found that track. <laughs> I mean, That's almost, almost perfectly there. Uh, so I, I, uh, I've got a picture of that track somewhere. I sent somebody a copy of it here. Let me let me go over to Facebook and see if I can find it there. Yeah, if you send that to me on Facebook Messenger, I can put it up on the screen. Okay, that'll be good. Let's see here. Probably rules. Give me just a second. 
No worries, sir. There is one question I had for you. Um, yeah. While you're while you're searching for that, I found a, an old documentary, and I don't know exactly when it was made, but I watched it here a while back, and uh, it, it was one of the times you were down at Honey Island, Honey Island, and uh, some old boy produced a pair of shoes that he claimed they used to make the tracks. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us about that? Well, I thought that that was one of the things that uh, caused me to just drop the subject altogether for a while. Uh, I was finding of that shoe. But as it turned out, uh, I asked Dana Holyfield about it, and she says that it's, it was reverse. Uh, it wasn't the, the, the shoe that made the prints. It was that the shoe was made from the prints. It was... Uh, oh. Yeah. It was made... Uh, and and so I said okay, but I still didn't didn't do anything else uh, with it uh, until I found my own evidence, mm -hmm. and that was that was a game changer for me. Well, you know, it's it's hard to it's hard to deny something when you when you've seen it yourself. Yeah, right. Honey Island, here we go. So do you think that they were uh, they made the shoes to try to continue to, to continue to get attention, or if they were just going to try to hoax some folks? Uh, so who somebody did it on their own for whatever reason? You know, I can make a shoe to fit. I've got a, a track that I got from Perry Ford, a copy of one of the tracks. I could make a shoe to reasonable facsimile. Uh, you you. I only had her word for it. Yeah. So it wasn't enough until I found my own evidence. Well, the thing about most of those fakes, because they, they even claim that the uh, from the Patterson Gimlin and the uh, the up in the California the, in the logging area where all the Jerry first, Drew. They, yeah, they claim that they found the hoaxing devices but you know i've seen grover Krantz and jeff meldrum both debunk those because number one there was unless you had like five people on top of each other walking around there's no way that these tracks would have been made as deep as they were made uh there were dermal ridges on most of, most of them that pete chilcutt actually looked at and found most of these casts have actual dermal ridges on them which is next to impossible to fake unless you just are like one of the smartest people that ever walked the face of the earth. So, well, I mean, anything can be faked, but you know, uh, it's, it's, you ask yourself, you know, is it a reasonable idea right. that it is fake? Sometimes it's easier to believe it's real because there's so much going for it. You know, uh, Angry. a skeptic or skeptical mind, and yeah. at different levels of skepticism, but to a skeptical mind, uh, they they look for anything. Uh, and a person that doesn't want to believe, no proof will ever be enough. But to those who already believe, no proof is really necessary. All right, you should have that picture there in message. I've got it. I was getting ready to put it up, but I had a question for you first. Yeah. Uh, Barbara Green, one of the ladies in chat, says, Mr. Davis, is there any proof that these creatures may or may not have migration habits? You know, I I, I really don't. It's so little known about them. Uh, there's, it goes somewhere uh, in in June when, when, when that little session is over. It goes somewhere. I don't know where it goes, but it don't, you don't see it again until around November. Uh, then it comes back. So it's a, uh, it's, it's a, uh, it, it, it moves, moves about. Well, uh, mountain lions have like a 250 mile range. It would only really make sense that an animal that big would, would have to have a range. Uh, that's, that's big territory up in there. Uh, Louisiana is a lot of rivers come down to South Louisiana mm -hmm. and they all combine uh, they when they reach sea level 
when the bottom of their channels reach sea level, it slows down and spreads out. That whole atchee fillet basin down there. It, it, it becomes just a extremely wide and slow moving water that, uh, that it's just huge. Uh, there's people that live in it because they live on houseboats or they live, you know, it's, it's a tough life. It can be, but, uh, I remember when I was living down there as a kid, yeah, people lived all up in them swamps. Uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a tough place. It's, it's big and broad. Uh, have you ever seen that show, uh, Naked and Afraid? Mm -hmm. They had an episode where they, they had to make 21 days down there. That was the hardest episode they ever had. <laughs> and they'd been all over this world. Uh, it, it was cotton mouse and the mosquitoes were so bad. Alligators. And, uh, alligators. And then people were naked, you know. <laughs> and, and it came a hard rain and it flooded. And they were on a little island. Just barely, barely could stand on a little spit of land, uh, and they didn't want to tap out. But you know, it it gets too bad. Uh, you risking life and limb. Exactly. Well, here's that picture you were talking about. I'm going to put it up and let you explain it. All right. There you go. Woo! Big three toe track. That's a suck. Big sucker. Yeah. Yep. That that. <laughs> That swamp in there, that's taken in June. And that the, after it's kind of baked and it hadn't rained in a while, that mud on top will form a hard crust. And underneath that is clay. And when the clay sometimes is unstable, it'll swell and, and it break through the crust and make what I call a spit of clay, soft clay. Mm -hmm. And that's what that was. It was just a little hump or spit of soft clay. And it stepped right on it. And, you know, uh, I'll tell you, it. when you find your own evidence, it makes all the world the difference. Uh, it's not that you don't trust people. It's just that it, it, it the impression that it gives you or when you're, you know that no one set you up, hoaxed you in any kind of way they couldn't have that this was the, the creature Harlan Ford was talking about. That track didn't make itself. I totally agree. And it, you know, with that crust like that, it had to take something pretty heavy to hit to do that. Yeah, it uh it 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 stepped down into that softer clay and <laughs> uh I, I don't know how far that thing was away ahead of me, you know, it looks pretty fresh. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I was kind of uh, in, in, in disbelief at first, you know, I, I said, it, I said, I, I had, I had made up my mind that it wasn't there. <laughs> and I'm looking at this and uh, I, I said, well, it can't be, <laughs> but here it is. And, and, and so I began, I began to find a lot of some things that I found were, were, more along the lines of classic Bigfoot evidence. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, when I, I came there, at, pulled in there after a storm, and it had been, uh, had quit raining about 10 minutes prior, and made my, I made my way across the lock and, and onto the trail on the other side of the canal, and I came across this, this limb about this big around, let's see, this big around, and it had been like snapped. You know how you tight, you just that tight arc snap, and then it had two pieces of that, and it had been laid across the trail in an X pattern. And I looked inside the break on the on the sapling the. The, the stem of the sapling and there was no water in it. So I knew that it had been done after the rain had quit. 
So I, I, I'm evidently surprised one then. But that uh, little X thing, and I'm, I'm not a Bigfoot, so I really don't know what it means. But I suspect it might mean, you know, keep your butt off this trail, you know, go, go home. Uh, and as it turned out, it started raining again, so I did. Uh, but, you know, that's, that's hard evidence. It's not, it's not, uh, you know, just something, you know, you just dreamed up or thought of. Uh, I've, I've run across that in other places. Uh, Flat Rock's got a question for you, Mr. Davis. He said, have you come across any more videos that show self-illuminating eyes like the video from Alabama? I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm unsure about what self-illuminating is. Uh, it may be highly reflective. You know, I, I, there's no way for me to tell which it is. But when you talk about a photograph, a photograph can pick up, record any kind of eye shine. Uh, especially if you're if you have a night shot, uh, I, I run into some things in game cams. Uh, I have a game cam, I have two of them out, and these raccoons would come up to it. And if if you if they go right up to the camera like this, or like this, and their eyes are shining straight into the camera, you can get an internal reflection. In that camera and then you will see its eyes projected back behind him in the background and it looks like there's something standing eight or ten feet tall with eye shine looking down at the raccoon huh. but it's actually the raccoon's eyes he moves to the right it moves to the left he moves to the left it moves to the right so everything's mirror reversed it's an internal reflection off the backside of one of those, either the lens or the little glass in front of the lens. You don't know. That's cool. Use well, a night shot. Night shot is, is sensitive enough to pick it up. Well, uh, Mr. Davis, uh, Barbara Green had another question. Is, uh, is it possible that it leaves during hurricane season? Hey, that's the thought now. They have them down there. You know that. Oh, yeah. Uh, it may go north. Uh, that the whole Pearl River system has has got a long history of Bigfoot sightings. I remember when they were clearing off the land for the Ross Barnett Reservoir. Mm -hmm. They had a guy saw a Bigfoot in there. Yep. You know that that little incident got well known. Uh, and so, what's I don't know what would stop them from going anywhere they wanted to go up and down that, you know, the Pearl River is not, it's a wild river. Hmm. It's, it's, it's a few pastures on it, but there's not a lot of crops or anything. No, no. It's, it's a pretty much a wild river. You get down that lower end, man, you're in some real, sure enough, it's that Amazon type stuff. Got another question. Um, yeah, go ahead, guys. Yeah, uh, Mark Napier asked, "Are they are both feet three toed?" Well, these toes dominate, but there is another appendage right here on a good clear print. And if it chooses to put it in the ground, you know, it's, uh, it's just a, a print on the ground. You know, it, 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 it's an impression of a foot, however that foot landed. Uh, so, and, and you also have other things like when this was poured, it was a copy of a copy. In both cases, they over poured the plaster because these thin fingers here or toes will break off you know so they over did over pour so this this part right in here is over pour 
it, it people mistake it mistake it for webbed feet but it, it's if it has webbing it's 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 minimal it's more or less a grasping foot you know like this with a, a, a kind of a thumb uh, and, and that's that's what I guess was poured for me by Perry Ford so would you would you classify that as like maybe like an orangutan for uh, for climbing trees or it, it I know that the the first time that Harlan Ford saw it he said he saw that it had come down out of a tree uh, so uh, however however he did it uh, may not maybe not like an orangutan uh, people uh, that that's always been a subject of contention people say well it's part alligator but, but they base that on that overpour <laughs> it's a uh, old man ted williams said he saw two swimming the pearl river and they swam arm over arm which means that it, it they they call that brachiation uh it means that you have a ball and socket in your shoulder and only primates have that including humans yeah uh so it's uh that would indicate to me that it's a primate but the lady that told me the other day she said it, it came across it was not not arm over arm uh the one she saw uh up there on the canal so I guess they can swim any way they want to. But you can't swim arm over arm if you don't have the ball and socket. You know, those footprints, DA, those look a lot like that uh, Skate 4 Swamp. Uh, That's exactly what I was thinking. So have you ever – I'm from South Carolina, Mr. Davis, and we got uh, – in Bishop County, uh, there's a what's called the Lizard Man of Skate 4 Swamp, which is in Bishop County. I'm those footprints that, yeah. you have okay those footprints look a lot like what has been have been cast we've actually had a show on it here uh do you think maybe misidentification of that and maybe same thing in honey island is in could be hanging out in the skateboard swamp down there or do you think maybe it's just a coincidence that both those sets of footprints look a lot alike and you got two different species that got the exact same type of footprint well let me show you something if I can find it here. Let's see here. Hang on. I've got three or four hard drives. And sometimes I forget which which one has what on it. Uh, but there's there's a couple of examples of this. Wait a minute. So I misspelled. See if I get lucky. There it is. Let's see if I can. I think I know how to put share. Uh, let me see if I can do it here. Let me go back over here. Go to the settings. Present. Share screen. Okay, choose what to share. Entire screen. All right. Let me go out, find it again. Can you see that? 
Yes, sir. Yep. That that was taken in Pennsylvania in a swamp. See that? That that looks like the picture William sent us. Does look a lot like it. Yep, because I remember remember we were talking about the stick being across the the toes on mm -hmm. that one. Okay, let me find the other one now. All right, this was taken in a swamp in Pennsylvania as well by two different people. That's pretty interesting. Mm-hmm. It looks a lot like that. That Honey Island? Not that Honey Island. Uh, Skate Horse Swamp. Skate Horse, yeah. Yeah, it does. It, See, it really does. It seems to be more swamp-related than than whether it's north or south. Do you think that's an adaptation for the environment? Uh, I don't know. I don't know there. It's got, it's, it's able to grip. I know that it, it, it can go up, you know, trees and stuff and grip limbs and stuff. Haven't there been some, some skunk ape traps tracks that were found with three toes? Uh, there have I been. So. I've, I've seen some. Uh, I have. Um, and, to me, know, that, that seems almost like a like an adaptation for locomotion in the in the in the swamps. Yeah, uh, Robert D had a question for you, Mr. Davis. He says, yeah, "What do you think ahead. of the Dogman reports?" Well, that's interesting with the Dogman. Uh, it's it, it, seeing is believing, is what I say, and mm -hmm. and I I hate to, you know, I, I've learned I learned a very valuable lesson in my Honey Island uh, journey. Uh, that you know, uh, don't be so quick to say to to say that it's it's not there. Uh, they say absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. Uh, so uh, if people continue to say they've seen them, I saw one. Right, broad daylight. Then they they must have seen something. Hey, people won't just continue to do that, you know. Are you, I, I wasn't. I can't get in your head. I can't experience what you saw, DA. But I, I believe that you saw something. I believe you saw what you said you saw. You know, so uh, there's no reason to disbelieve you. You know, so that that's kind of where I stand on it. Uh, but I still would like to see it myself. And it, it's like the same way with the Honey Island. It took me all the years to finally see something on my own. But it made a just tremendous impact on me. Oh, yeah. And, the one I saw was last July in Land Between the Lakes in, in Kentucky. Oh, yeah. Okay. I, that place has got a reputation. It sure does. Yeah, and not a good one. It's well, you know, it doesn't. Uh, it's it's kind of a mystical place. There is something to that place. Yeah. They, uh, from the moment I got there, you 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 just couldn't shake the feeling. Um, when we crossed the canal and into LBL, when we were in Grand Rivers, everything felt fine. But as soon as you got into LBL, you just felt it. All along the highways and through the woods of Kentucky, when we were on the way to LBL. And even in Grand Rivers, just across the canal, we saw deer, we saw opossums, we saw roadkill. In North LBL, I didn't see a single animal in a week. Is that if you don't see an animal, does that look that make you uh, believe maybe that one's around? It uh, it certainly made me think something was around. As I we had something pace us outside Nickel Cemetery, and then of course we had the visual sighting just just outside of Demumbers Bay. And it was broad daylight. It wasn't a nighttime sighting where it was just a shadow. It was broad daylight, and I saw full definition. I've watched the animals that I've been photographing with my game cams, and they they move in and out for some reason. Uh, and the, a bear shows up. And during the time that this bear was in the neighborhood, uh, he was he was wreaking havoc. He getting on people's porches and mm -hmm. 
he ran out in the highway and hit a car, ran into the side of a lady's car and dented her car all up. And uh, you couldn't scare the, an animal up around there. And, and they came and trapped the bear and took him away. And the animals are all back. <laughs> so, Was it a black bear? Yeah, it was a black bear. You know, people don't realize, you know, black bears look cute and cuddly and they're not all that big. And the ones here in Missouri are, you know, at, at best, I think the biggest I've seen is around five feet on its hind legs. So they're not huge, but they are incredibly powerful animals. Uh, there was a lady that was feeding one on her porch here in Missouri and the Missouri Department of Conservation kept warning her not to. Well, the time she didn't feed it, it basically forced its way into her kitchen and destroyed her house. Uh, whoa. Well, you know, uh, a guy, a guy right down the road from me, uh, something woke him up about two in the morning. He opened up his door, and it, the bear was standing on its hind legs, staring at him, face to face. He slams the door, and the bear tears his porch up because he done dropped food there, and the food went down in the cracks uh, of the boards. And then he went out and and somehow. Made Managed to get in his car and uh, tore his car up. <laughs> and that's not a so this, that's not an advertisement this, for locking your cars. This this bear had become a, a real nuisance, and uh, they they finally decided to put out an effort to try to get him. And they got him, took him off to a bear land wherever it is. But uh, it, it's uh, having a bear in your neighborhood is like somebody laying up for you. Yeah, you know, I try to walk every day, and I, I'm sitting here thinking, "What if that bear jumps out?" You know, uh, uh, you know, it's it's it probably wouldn't, but you know, that's on the back of your mind. Uh, I grew up in the country, but I live in a in, live in a city now, and uh, I don't go for a walk in my own neighborhood without a firearm on because uh, the um, there's a whole different animal that I'm worried about. Oh yeah, well, yeah. The human animal. <laughs> DA, where was that uh, that story you told us about the guy who woke up and the dog man was trying to crawl in through his doggy door? Where was that? That was that was between uh, between Grand Rivers and Paducah, uh, 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 Kentucky. It was just off the lake, but it was between Grand Rivers and Paducah. Paducah is like fifteen miles from Grand Rivers or something like that. It's not very far. How'd you like to wake up and find that, Doc? I wouldn't. That's a mag dump situation. Yeah, it's time to get up on out of here. Half past. Half past. Mr. Davis, John Abraham asks, he says, do you guys think there will ever be another Patterson-Gimlin type film that will change everything, or was that a one in a million shot? I don't see any way that it could be another one because we've entered the digital age. And people have a mistrust of digital images. I agree. Yeah, if, if you uh, if you do, if you do get one on a video, try to film it with two cameras. You know, two two different people film it. That that would that would be the only way. Uh, because if you just have one, people will swear that you fake it or hoax it. You know. Yeah. Even well, even, even with two, they're still going to say it was somebody in a suit. Yeah, well, they could still do that, but you know, you try to you try to overcome that in any way you can. But, but we, the the people who are coming into these fields now, uh, they have uh, the misfortune to be coming in at a time when it is hard it is hard to meet all those requirements. Well, unfortunately, yeah. with the advent of Photoshop and video shop programs, it's become so much easier to fake an image. And you know, it takes it takes somebody like yourself or, or even Thinker Thunker, you know, days, if not weeks to sift through it and decide whether or not it's it's believable. And uh, I, I know the, some of the work you've put in, <laughs> you know, both, you know, both end of the Patterson Gimlin footage and in the, some of the other footage you've analyzed. People probably don't realize just how many hours you've put in on those. Well, it, to me, it was worth it uh, as long as as long as I could see that there was something to be gained, you know, from it. 
I wanted the film to tell its own story. I, mm -hmm. I, if, 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 if you had the very best images and it was all brought to the center and kept stable, that it should tell its own story. And if that story meant that it was a hoax, that was fine with me. Uh, it, if I saw a zipper, that's fine. Uh, but as it turned out, uh, it, it just got better. You know, well, it was, it's like uh, my, my friend Nick Valente. Yeah, he uh, was he got some multiple reports from one area of North Carolina of, of people seeing dog man in this one area. It was multiple reports. So he went down there and you know, did a, investigated the area. And what he found was a, an, an unusually large black bear in that area. Uh, it was he said it was about seven feet on its hind legs, which is a really big black bear. And uh, I was I had a lot of respect for him coming out and saying, you know, this is a black bear. It's not a dog man, you know, coming forward and saying what it was, as opposed to trying to grandstand and, you know, to show grainy footage and, and claim it was a dog man when it wasn't. So, you know, big, my, my hat's off to, to Nick for being 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 honest, even when, you know, the hope was we would, could find some dog man evidence. And when when it turned out it wasn't, he was very forthcoming about that. In, in the cryptid world, it, it seems to be this way, that everything that you're looking for has a natural double. If you're looking for the ivory bill woodpecker, you have the pileated woodpecker. Uh, if you're looking for the uh, uh, Bigfoot, you have the bear. You know, it stands up on its hind legs. You know, it, 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 it seems to be always something that people can say that's what you saw mm -hmm. you know uh and, and sometimes it is what you saw uh you have to school yourself so that you know the differences uh it's it's, it's you know almost imperceptible in flight to tell which one is which on the ivory bill uh you have to look hard at it uh they they're like cousins but they're not the same uh, Pileated are everywhere. Ivory Bill hadn't been seen since the forties. So, uh, I, 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 people have said they've seen them in the Pearl River uh, basin. But uh, getting back to the other, uh, the, bear, the bear. The bear has no shoulders, so mm -hmm. when it when it stands up, it's it's going to be, you know, right on down the line. Uh, it won't go down 90 degrees out. If it has shoulders, it's not a bear. Right. You know, that's, that's what I look for. Man. Uh, sometimes it'll be dark 30 and you'll see a bear and it's hard to tell, you know, it's, you have to look real hard, uh, but that's one of the things I look for. Uh, and, and you learn uh, on, on all of these that there, there is, there are distinctions. Uh, Flat, Rock, Flat Rock had a comment on the earlier question. He said, MK, the, the video I was referring to is the daytime video you discussed, uh, the Alabama Swamp Booger, which shows eye shine in the daylight. Do you believe that was self-illuminated or reflective? I'll be honest with you, I don't know. It does seem odd that day, daylight, if the camera wasn't on night shot or anything, and that it would be showing you know, reflection in the daylight like that. I don't, I don't know. Uh, that's, that's a mystery. Uh, you know. had another question. Dr. 45120 Sharp Rothstein says, does the three-toed cast show the same metatarsal joint as the Western Bigfoot casts? Uh, to me, they don't. To, to me, they seem to be a different type foot or different style. Uh, I, I don't see that, but there again, I haven't come upon a whole bunch of them, you know, uh, mm -hmm. and they're in a they're in a soft, mushy environment where you know the Bigfoot of the Pacific Northwest is in mountainous, you know, rocky terrain. Uh, I don't know that it's it's a fair comparison. Uh, I I don't see them as being the same. 
Um, and, uh, Richard Cox says, no, go ahead, Doc. I'm sorry. Richard Cox says, Davis, have you heard of the Japanese Kappa? The first uh, cast you showed looks like what their tracks are represented to be. They are reptilian. Okay. No, I, I can't say that I have heard of it. Uh, but people do gravitate toward reptilian when they see that track. But like I said, uh, a lot of overpour there. You know, uh, right. uh, an alligator has four toes on the rear foot and five on the front. And uh, that didn't have the three that, that were, you know, plainly visible. It could have had that yeah. little thumb thing and you, mm -hmm. you might not have would have seen it. Uh, and I'm going to I'm going to ask you to expand on that on those casts. Was there enough detail to see any uh, any ridges or anything like whirls, ridges, anything like that? Like uh, you'd see in a in a foot or hand of a of a, a primate. Well, you know, uh, I, I, revisiting the, uh, the dermal ridge thing. Uh, Bigfoot. Pacific Northwest Bigfoot. Mm -hmm. It, it's highly unlikely that you're going to get very much in the way of dermal ridges. It walks on some pretty rough ground. Because it's, it's so calloused. And, it's right. And, I mean, you, you, right. you'd have to walk in a shoe, <laughs> you know, to get, like us. Yeah, to get dermal ridges to be gotcha. clear. Now, that makes uh, perfect sense. Makes perfect what sense. they were calling dermal ridges were were pouring artifacts of the plaster mm. it, it'd form a wave front and then it would it would if it would wick uh into the uh uh to the soil the soil would be dry or something or, or dry enough it, that moisture would wick into the soil and then it would break and go over that and form another wave front and this is as you're pouring it uh, I think this guy named Matt Crowley was able to demonstrate pretty well that those were not dermal ridges. Uh, gotcha. I think it, Jimmy Chilcutt had stated mm -hmm. that they were going the opposite way of a primate, normal primate or a human. Uh, but that's because they weren't dermal ridges. Gotcha. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's 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 not it's not really reasonable to think that you're going to get real good dermal ridges when something walks barefooted. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. That makes you, perfect sense. You I have a real thick, crusty hide down there, you know, yeah. with no no uh, you know nerves in it. If you had nerves close to the surface, you could stand the wall. Right. Yeah. It, they buried up way behind all that tough skin and fat. Uh, so all your ridges are worn off, probably. If you talk him into wearing shoes for a while, maybe you, could, <laughs> you know, I'm sure he has them. <laughs> no, that's a, that's a great explanation. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's, it's one of those things where people are looking for a gold standard, you know. They, they want to find something that would tell them, the difference, you know, uh, and, and I, I don't blame anybody. Uh, I think Jimmy got a little bit, you know, uh, he he got a little uh, over the top with it. You know, he I was there when he was giving one of his speeches. And he said, uh, my my testimony puts people in jail. You know, well, like he couldn't be wrong. You know, well, he turned out to be wrong. I mean, what about the people he's put in jail? And, you know, I'd be thinking about that. If if he put me in jail, I'd say, well, look at here. <laughs> you don't see Jimmy too much on the circuit anymore. He, he was real popular there for a while. But, uh, and, I, and that's not to say that there, you can't find on their footprints something definitive. Uh, some somebody, you know, I'm sure he was he was at the top of his game as far as his job goes. Uh, but it's still it's not it's not something that what you're doing in the everyday life you bring something to the table, no doubt all of us do. Mm -hmm. 
but it's not a guarantee, <laughs> you know, that you're that it's going to turn the world upside down. Right. Uh, I, I think he kind of saw it like that. Uh, it, it, it not ended up being not so definitive. And, yeah. and other other things as well, uh, down through the years, uh, uh, the mid-tarsal break, it was going to be the definitive thing for a while. But even, mm. even there may be, uh, you know, uh, a lot of flex flexibility to the foot, you know, because uh, it's barefooted out in the wild. You know, it's my foot would get flexible. You know, if you keep on bending it, and shaping it around rocks and stuff, but uh, that that it that it actually has a, another ball and socket midway is probably not likely, in my estimation. Uh, so I, I don't think that it's yeah. I, well, I think that the only thing that you can say really definitively is Bigfoot is weight. Uh, they are heavy, even if they are the same size as your foot. They're going to be way down in the soil. Uh, and I think that John Green, the Canadian researcher, he realized that. And he offered $100,000 to anybody who could uh, make tracks as deep as the Patterson tracks you know, at, on the same sandbar. And nobody collected. <laughs> you know, it, it was, they were just, I found tracks on that sandbar. It was about 12, 15 of them. And they were four inches deep. And I couldn't even Ooh. stomp over an inch. Uh, so I know how heavy they are. They're, they're, they they have more mass than we do. They have more muscles. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm guessing that you, they get way underestimated on their weight you know, because people put that human parameter to it. You know, they look at it and hey, weigh three or four hundred pounds. You can double that. <laughs> you can just double it. Uh, that's <clears throat> that they, They're far more massive per square inch cubic per cubic inch uh, of flesh and they you can bet that they have the, the the hardware to feed them muscles the big heart the big lungs uh, yeah. all of that giant blood vessels uh, you know everything you needed to support that bones heavy bones uh, it's a it's a massive massive creature well and even as even as big as their feet are you've got all that mass centering all its weight right on those feet and that's gonna that's gonna be the the pressure point to make those big deep impressions like that like you said those things were four yeah. inches deep you couldn't even stomp you know i weigh 180 pounds I couldn't stomp that much. I got I got big feet for a little feller, you know, but I couldn't I couldn't stomp that deep. So. It, uh, it 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 gets to you when you're sitting standing over one looking at it, and you see how how heavy this thing was. And Doc, what do you wear a four T? <laughs> you're funny. I wear a size eleven. I wear a eleven and a half. <laughs> And I don't have an arch at all. I'm completely. I, he's a, he's a I, hobbit, DA. Yeah, I got I got flippers too, uh, Mr. Davis. Uh, if, if I step out, the pool, it's just a big triangle. That's it with some with some toes on it. If I uh, Robert D had a question, he said, "Have you done any new work on Paul on the Paul Freeman film? Uh, his son has come out on it now." Yeah, uh, maybe you can uh, tell me what his son has said. I I, I noticed he was on some. Uh, conferences and stuff uh i haven't heard anything from his son yeah. recently yeah okay uh I, that was just a, one of the questions from robert robert if you've got if you know any of the things he said if you could post a link or or let us know in the comments yeah that that uh that 
to me, that's a really good video too. I mean, it, it is a great it was, video. It, the, it, it was taken with the video equipment of the day, you know, which is the big VHS cassette, you know. And I think I still have one of those in the hall the, closet. The, the chip isn't really that great, but you know, it, he was fairly close to it. Uh, you you can see a good bit of that. when I when I stabilized it and uh, did some more enhancement work on it. Uh, you can you can see it. Uh, it stops and looks back at him, stares at him, and when he, he when it does, it completely blends into the background. He can't see it anymore, and he pulls the camera down and says, "Jesus." Uh, and, and then it starts to walk again, and he picks it back up with his eyes, and he puts it back on it, and he runs up there to the direction that it walked and picks it up again, and I stabilize that, and when you stabilize it, you can see that it's picking up a small one and bringing it up. The legs are swinging. Uh, so it, 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 goes, it goes in the annals of... Uh, authentic as far as I'm concerned. Well, a lot of the researchers we've talked to, uh, Doug Hycheck from from Monster Quest and Untold Radio, a lot of the researchers out of Florida, are when they're finding hair samples, they're finding hair that has a clear hair shaft. Uh, yeah. Do you think that could have something to do with why they they uh, they blend into the background and the, the purported cloaking ability? Yeah, I, I do think that. And I, I, I think it not only, not only blend... But they, I, if you watch the Patterson film, I've got some clips that show it. When it walks by those birch trees, and uh, or maybe they're alders, they got a kind of a light colored bark on them. Mm -hmm. uh, it, its back becomes the color of the tree until it walks by, and then it gets dark again. Uh, it, it, it floods. The, that the, the color off that tree or the, the the intensity off that tree floods her back while she's standing in that position and then as she passes on by it gets back dark again uh, so yeah that that did it for me uh, and I, I've, I've looked at some hair shaft samples and I, I've got some uh they show clear shafts. Mm -hmm. uh, as a matter of fact, let me see. If I find one here. That's something we've mentioned quite a few times on the show. Is you know, I, I know a lot of people report on sight in sightings what what uh, for some reason is referred to as the woo in in some circles. Uh, but we've we've tried to look for logical explanations for some of these, and a clear hair shaft to me is a far more logical explanation. Uh, than simply, uh, you know, having the ability to cloak. Yeah, well, I mean, it's a uh, the whole subject matter is 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 full of what I call strangeness, but I mean, mm -hmm. it's a pretty pretty far out subject. But it's a uh, let me see. It's a uh, there's most of the time there's explanations. Mm -hmm. But oh, here's some right here. I'll just go through them. Uh, I'll uh, put that back up on screen so you. Uh, can you see that? Yes, sir. All right. You're looking at some of the hair samples that I've looked at. Hold it. I've got to be able to. Hold on. I can't. I can't move between the. the oh. Photos. Hold on. Just a minute. Let me. Uh, All right. There we go. Got his computer's a little slow with the uh running the uh the, no problem. The blog module. Want to say uh quick thanks to uh Kim Aitken for subscribing to the channel. Thank you and welcome to the DAX Machination. All right. That's an even better one. You can clearly see that. Yeah, but I still can't move between the pictures. Huh. Oh, then maybe I can do that here. Yeah, yeah that's, there we go. 
this is there we go. That's Bigfoot hair. What I believe is Bigfoot hair. You see, it looks di lots of different kinds. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, some of it's tangled. Some of it's made, uh, you know, made in a wad. It's like he's been sitting on it, mm -hmm. like that. Almost like a dreadlock. Uh, yeah, it's just kind of tang a tangle. Man. That, hey, that's what I was talking about, but I can't, it won't play. Uh, not unless I take it out of here. It's an animation. There we go. These are some great shots of those hairs. This is exactly what we've talked about a number of times on the show. You see that some of those clear shafts there? Look at that. Uh, translucence, I call it. Uh, they're different colors, but that's the scale. Real tight scales, round shafts. Mm -hmm. That was completely clear. You see that debris shows right through it. Yeah. Yep. Man, that would bend all kinds of light. Yeah, it's a. Uh, yep. Look at that! How that light bursts out of that shaft. That's almost it's like a fiber optic cable. Yeah, it's very similar. You know, that that, that could is. also explain why it's yeah. so hard to get a clear image of one. Yeah, it, it could. It, it could be a lot of a lot of the explanation there. All right, I did get it done. Outstanding. Thank you, sir. All right. Uh, K Talk says, uh, wh "Where was the amazing footage you analyzed taken of the white Sasquatch running by the creek? Where was it taken?" Uh, it was taken in Texas, East Texas, uh, along the Red River. Nice. Uh, and they, these guys, it was a group of people that had spent about four years uh, conditioning the Bigfoot to come to food. And uh, over that period of time, they were able to set up cameras they found out different things that stimulated the bigfoot to action mm -hmm. uh and so uh, they could really have written volumes about it what they learned uh i i came upon these the, it, the videos were brought to me for examination they were not supposed to be uh released to any to any pu public venue uh they the, the people were doing this for their own edification yeah you know, they, weren't, they weren't trying to to do anything public and uh when when i was when i had looked at some of what you look for in a video is is you're looking for it it doing something that a human a normal human could not do that's essentially what you're looking for to to try to get something captured on video where you can say you know that it's not, couldn't be a person in a suit you know and they had numerous numerous examples of that uh on these videotapes and these videotapes were were six hour long cassettes. There were 51 of them. And wow. Very intense. And you couldn't take your eyes off because Bigfoot might walk by and he, he might be gone in 30 seconds. I mean, you couldn't just, I'm going to run in here and use the bathroom or something, you know? Uh, so you had to just stay with it and you look at that screen and it's just a still, like a still picture. Uh, they left the cameras running constantly. It was not a motion detector type thing. It was the camera was just left running, left recording. Yeah. And so, uh, but when you got them, you got them. So, a lot of, of a lot of what uh, y'all saw on that, you know, was a result of sitting and staring your eyes out uh, at a monitor. But there again, it was worth it because mm -hmm. I was getting some really good stuff. Hard, hard to find, hard to get. Well, they did a good job. My hats are off to them. It's a 
hopefully, you know, they, these things should, should all should all contribute to a body of knowledge. Absolutely. Uh, if you got to get past the does it exist, I think it largely has, Bigfoot largely has gotten past that. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, the Patterson film, it languished for a lot of years, but they weren't showing the good versions of it. And when you show the good versions, it, it, it stands on its own. You know, there's not a lot you can you can use to tear it down. They 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 had to resort to well, Patterson didn't pay his bills. I don't know what that's got to do with anything. Absolutely nothing. You know, I, it, it can't be a real Bigfoot. Patterson didn't pay his bills. Uh, I'm sorry, but that's a real Bigfoot. Patterson. Patterson should have been able to pay him with the money he got from his film of a real Bigfoot. Uh, it, it's, they, it didn't get its due, but I think it's 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 coming into its own now. I agree. And and a lot of these other these other videos, uh, the Freeman footage and these East Texas videos are all all great stuff. Uh, Dirk Buckles asked. He said. Could the three toes really be five? Two toes webbed together and separate if climbing or swimming, but all together if walking on solid ground. You know, that's always possible. That's why the, 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 the foot, uh, a, a track or a cast of a track, is just an impression in the ground. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, your foot can hit a lot of ways. And it, depending on the type of soil and all of that, uh, you can. So, you ever seen anybody that walked on their heels or walked on the side of their foot? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, they all leave odd impressions. You know, uh, if you found, you might say, "Well, that must be, a, a, you know, the way all all people are." You know, you can't. You wouldn't do that. You know enough to know better. Uh, but you know, it's it's they can hold a foot up, they can hold a, a toe up. You know, they it, it don't necessarily have to impress everything in the ground. And so you get you get. I, I've I've seen a lot of half tracks where it's just the front of the foot. You know, it just they didn't walk on the heel. They just held their heel up. What for? I don't know. Right. Uh, I, I, I theorize that they're trying to make their foot look like a bear track. You know, uh, bears are common, mm -hmm. Bigfoot or not. But you think it could be an attempt at, at deception then? Yeah, deception, yeah. I, I, even though you, you, it doesn't leave any claws, uh, a lot of people don't, don't pay that much attention to a bear track if you're in bear country. You know, uh, if you, you had to take off and run up in the woods across the sandbar, get up on the front of the foot, just go like that, and it looks like a bear, you know, uh, just at a glance. Yeah. Uh, Steve Padden asked a question. He said, uh, uh, so question, what significance does the three-toe mean, or is it specific to a region or type? I always wondered. Uh I, I think that but what I can determine what people tell me that is more more uh, a southern thing that in this deep south that there's a lot more examples of the three toes the bigfoot hillbillies yeah well maybe <laughs> people don't people say that I I don't know why uh, they have the three toes but I, I have seen them myself just three toes that showed unless they were able to disguise or hold some toes out. Uh, but, but there again, you know, it's just an impression in the ground. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's, I always tell people if it leads me to a Bigfoot, then I'm interested in tracks. Absolutely. But if it doesn't lead me to a Bigfoot, they, they, they confuse <laughs> and they frustrate. <laughs> Corey uh, Cole wanted to know if you ever had a Sasquatch hair lab test as plant matter. 
Uh, yeah, I, I haven't had a lab test, but I've looked at it under a microscope and recognized it to be plant. Uh, there's there's certain type of uh, fungus and stuff like that, fungi that they, 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 it's, it has little hairy, you know, shafts, uh, and to the to the eye, you know, it, it looks like a hair, but when you look at it, the shaft in a microscope, you see that scale patterns are not the same. It's a plant. Yeah. Uh, what's a Linda Godfrey sent me some that were plants. Uh, but she she thought that they were big. She was glad to glad to hear what they were. Eric Testament says, I've worked in the trucking industry for years. I've heard so many reports of drivers looking out their mirrors at truck stops to see Bigfoot peeking around their trailers. I, I've heard the same thing. I sure have. I, one of know. the best dogman encounter stories I heard was from a trucker who had one looking in his window. <laughs> that could be good. <laughs> I, would, I, I, I think that maybe... Uh, I would have to peel a wheel in the truck. <laughs> That's pretty much what he did. <laughs> Golly. That's a, seeing is believing, but when they're looking in your window, that's seeing. Yeah, that's a whole different type of believing. That's yeah. believing you're probably on the menu. Yeah. Well, you know, we hear so much these days about disappearances and stuff, you know. <laughs> Uh, that, that stuff wasn't kept up with that much in the early days of Bigfoot. You know, mm -hmm. there were people who went missing then too, but it wasn't <clears throat> associated with Bigfoot. Well, how many times have you been out in the in the in the woods and found an abandoned, you know, homestead or shack out in the middle of nowhere? With well, the one my my friend and I found up in uh, Laclede County, Missouri was an abandoned homestead from before electricity was ran through that area. There were no power poles to it. And uh, there was still furniture in the, in the house, including a cast iron cook stove, which in, back in that day would have been an expensive item. Uh, but they abandoned a lot of stuff in that house. Yeah, well, somebody got ran off, didn't they? That's kind of what our thinking as well. I found a, a camp in Honey Island that had been ransacked. And the guy had cut his way out. He had a, a homemade tent made out of tarps. Mm -hmm. He cut his way out of there with a knife from the inside. <laughs> so something, Apparently he was pretty terrified then. I, we found that we, there were stuff scattered, stuff hanging out of the trees, uh, uh, underwear hanging out of the trees. You know, it was just stuff thrown everywhere. A uh, thermos sitting there with a big dent in it. Uh, like I said, I don't know what happened to him, but he, he... He left in a hurry. He left in a hurry, yeah. Well, you know, it's funny you mentioned that he cut his way from the outside. Uh, wasn't it the same case with the uh, the Dyatlov hikers up in yeah, uh, Dyatlov Pass, Russia? Sure was. Well, this guy was the same way. He ripped it open. I, I tell you, I, in, in negative 30 and 40 degree weather, I'd have to be pretty damn scared to cut my way out of a tent and flee without my cold weather survival gear. Yeah, I, I've got a book that I got for Christmas on the Diet Loft incident. I, I'm going to be reading it soon. Uh, that's it's real interesting. Uh, you know, it's uh, that many people lost their lives. <laughs> And they, they haven't come up with a surefire, you know, any evidence, you know, any conclusions that that sticks. Uh, Lots of theory on it, but I, I, I but I, I do firmly believe the Russians know more than they're saying. Probably. They don't say a lot. They don't say, true. Not, not to the West. They, uh, that that's real interesting. I, I now Igor Bortsev, he he won't even talk about the diet line. You can't even really? bring it up. He, huh. he won't talk. That's interesting. I wonder why. I don't know. He said he don't want to even discuss it. Huh. 
I wonder if it's because he's been told to shut up about it, or if it's a if it's considered a you know taboo subject in Russia. Well, I, I don't know. I, I didn't want to press him on it. It's uh, I'm not a pushy guy, you know. I I, I, uh, I I'll ask somebody a question, but if I see that it's if they get bent out of shape about it, I I just leave them alone. Yeah. Um, I was something else I was going to ask you. I'm trying to remember what it was. Um, oh, uh, you know, back to the, the clear hair shafts. Um, is that something that, you know, in the, in the, in, in your area of expertise, have you seen that as in across the board, like all over the U S or just specifically in your area? I think it's like that across the board. Uh, whatever I think, they they grow it. They grow the hair that they could go in. The same Bigfoot could be in the Pacific Northwest or over mm -hmm. the Maine or whatever, and it still works for them. You know, they 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 obviously know that they have that going for them. And uh, uh, you know, I think. Uh, it, it, one of the things we do here and in, in, in our own research, uh, we, we look for logical explanations to some of the, to some of these 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 uh, encounter stories. And I think that that clear hair shaft to me makes more sense uh, than you know I always said you can't explain a mystery with another mystery. Uh, but I think that is a physical piece of evidence that explains some of these these more incredible sightings. Uh, you're right. Uh... It, it, it's uh, it's scientifically valid. I don't know if it explains everything, but it does explain explains it explains a few things. And uh, you know, Robbie here, uh, he he's a tracker. He's a trained tracker for law enforcement. And him and I have talked about the tracks that seemingly disappear in the middle of a field. And we've discussed how it is possible to backtrack on your own tracks. Our special forces teams are taught to do it. Rangers do it. Uh, grizzly bear have been known to do it. You know, it's not impossible that, you know, just because the track disappears in the middle of the field doesn't mean it didn't backtrack and go off on stony ground where you couldn't track it anymore. Uh, hey, what's his name? Um, uh, oh, gosh, I'm trying to remember what I was going to say. Let me, let me find this. The Bigfoot vanishes. Okay, here we go. You see, uh, am I still on sharing? Yeah. I'll put put it back up on screen. Go right yeah, ahead. Put it on the screen there. Oh, there you go. Watch him when he stops. He just immediately blended where is, in. Where is he? Where is he? He's still in the same spot. He just stopped yep. moving. You can't see the frame. He you disappeared in a single frame. Watch. There he goes. Yep. You see why it's so dangerous to try to follow one. That is, to me, that validates everything mm -hmm. we were saying about the clear hair shafts. Yeah, it, he just blended in. He, uh, even, even he disappeared right in front of it. And he didn't see him again until he moved. Right. Until That's, he moved. Which is how which, exactly what we said. It's how moving. many deer have you shot, DA, based on yeah. you saw him moving? Right. Man, and I had when deer, it wasn't moving, I didn't see the dang thing. I had deer fifty yards from my stand. I didn't even see until they freaking moved. They were right in front yep. of me, and I'm looking right at them. Yep. That's crazy, man. Yeah. That uh, that's that's a that's a, a good one, video. A really, good that is a great video. Yeah, yeah. it is. Uh, it's a tutorial in, in what to expect from a bigfoot. That Ooh. thing, that thing wasn't just immediately running. No, it 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 thought for a little bit that it might want a piece of him. Uh, you know why it didn't? Why it did I not check him? Because he was talking to himself, and the Bigfoot was unsure if he was alone or not. 
you know, the whole otherwise time, he might have been a missing four one one. He he came up that hill, saying, "Oh, bro, he's just he's talking to the camera." But yeah. it it sounds to someone else like he's got a buddy here and a buddy over there, and there's they know what a gun is. Yeah, uh, but it thought about it. Uh, that's what the Hoopas told me. The Hoopa Indians told me, if you encounter a Bigfoot, speak to it in the language, whatever language that you speak, and at the same time, back away. And that's essentially what he was doing. He was speaking out like he had somebody with him. Yeah. Uh, it was inadvertent, but it probably saved his hide. Yeah. Because it had a small one right there. Uh, and, Rico Rick says, uh, MK, huge respect. Your thoughts on increased sightings? Well, there's a lot a lot of people moving out to the woods. Uh, I don't. I really don't know if if there's more Bigfoot or just more people in, you know, incursion into their areas. Uh, I also think that people, when, it, when they start to to move their their neighborhoods and stuff out to the to the to the edge of the big woods, they they have these garbages and stuff, and, and that's easy pickings. Mm -hmm. Bears, uh, a couple of bears came out of the woods and took up residence in a situation just like that, and they had them on security cameras and stuff, and they never went back to the woods. They just stayed there. And We've been catching black bear and mountain lion on on the ring doorbell cameras here in town. They they put on about fifty percent weight. I mean, they got huge just off the garbage that we throw away. You know that we don't even want. Well, um, and and the garbage and the small animals they put out at nighttime. Let the dog Fifi go out and do their business, and Fifi's a snack. If it's just easy pickings. If yeah. you hang, if you're able to hang around and people and, and just and just kind of lay low, uh, they they own the night. We don't own it. Exactly. We we, yeah. we can take our little peaks. We got our game cams and sometimes a security camera to pick them up. But, well, Sharon Guy wants to know your thoughts, Mister Davis, on government-made cryptids like Sasquatch, Dogman, or any others. Government made, meaning uh, they created the cryptid, or yeah, I would assume that's what you know. Yeah. That's been a theory that's gone around that their experiments gone, gone haywire, gone haywire. Yeah, uh, I have heard lots of things, and uh, some I have I have confidence in, and others less so. Uh, there, there was up in Fort Lewis. Washington, they uh, they 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 picked up a Bigfoot on the, the perimeter cameras, and they sent two guys out there, and the guys shot it, and they took it in. And they said that they they ran tests on the blood, uh, how long it took them but that it contained chlorophyll, uh, which I have reason to believe that that was an actual thing. What, what, would, what would that be an indication of? Oh, I, I have no idea. Uh, I can think of some things about Bigfoot that I know of. They, their characteristics is that they... They have tremendous mass with they don't eat a lot. There's not a lot to eat. Be, well, if you lived in the Bluff Creek area, if we lived there, we would become gaunt and skinny. And we could make it, but we wouldn't thrive. Uh they you see how big Patty is. That she's yeah. she's got to have something going for her a little bit different type. You know, process. Uh, so that's that. Well, all that mass and weight and everything. 
Uh, it, it just seems to me like that something is going on there that we don't know about. And maybe that's, they kind of, you know, stumbled into it there. Maybe some of it, uh, some way that they could create sugars by, by light, use of light. Uh, but there again, I don't know. That's, that's something that may, we may get an answer one day. Uh, yeah. Our government may already have answers, some of them anyway. I, who knows? Uh, I know that they they issued a survivor survival map. Uh, and in that survival map, they showed all the animals that you might run into for a two-week. They drop you off in Fort Lewis. They drop you off into the woods and you live for two weeks on your own. And then, yes, that's part of your training. And that map shows a Sasquatch. Uh, and that was printed by the U S government. Well, you know, we, we, I, all three of us have, are pretty much of the same opinion. We don't believe that the government has created these things, but we sure as, Heck, believe that they probably have weaponized them at some point or another, or probably still are, or tried, or tried to, yeah. Well, let me tell you something. It, it, it it's a, uh, and uh, I joke around with people that I've shared that with. I said maybe green is the new red. <laughs> uh, just, uh, just referring to that that chlorophyll thing. You, there again, you won't know unless, uh, unless somebody either tells you or you find out on your own some way. Uh, but that's supposed to, allegedly, supposed to happen. Well, it's, that's what we say. Everything that we see here, no, but it's always based some small part of truth. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, there's, uh, there's some basis. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. MK. Go ahead. You go ahead. No, well, there, I'm talking about the chlorophyll. There's, there's, there's talk that there's scientific data that shows that chlorophyll uh, is really, really similar to hemoglobin, uh, which is what oxygen binds to, and it increases oxygen carrying capability, builds stronger red blood cells, things like that. So I don't know why it would be in their blood, but I mean, it could definitely. From a scientific standpoint, it could definitely say something about their endurance and uh, their ability to oxygenate like we can't. But there you go. That's what I was talking about. It there's yeah. there's something there's something unexplained there about the way they process things. Uh, we we there's no way we as normal human beings could get out and live in that environment and 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 become big and massive like that. Right. You know, off just berries and stuff. You know, uh, it would never happen. No. I, I truly believe they are omnivorous like bears, but they, they even, you know, considering their, you know, the, a, a different metabolism, something that big would still require a lot of calories, you would think. Well, it just, it just depends on how the, if, if they have our processing or if they have a different type of processing. Mm -hmm. You know that that's a that that that's some the unknown part of it. Uh, so uh, I think I think that uh, a lot of people a lot of people don't like or they feel uncomfortable with theories, but uh, they call that brainstorming, and that's how problems get solved when you you don't have all the information. You you. You make a lot of different theories, and then you see which ones hold up to scrutiny, which one fits the what you do know, and then you throw the rest of them out, and then you start again, and you just keep going until you eventually build one that fits everything, you know, and then you you kind of know that you that's the direction you need to look. Um, that's a it's brainstorming and it's, it's, it's a legitimate way of 
problem solving. You di have dialogue. You talk with other people. Uh, so you know it's that we're 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 in a, a podcast, but you know we're in a room together talking mm -hmm. and uh, sharing what we know and what we think, and that's how that's how you you get to the crux of the, of the problem. Well, I mean, it, just like I said, it goes back to not everybody, I mean, or nobody's an expert on, on the topic. <clears throat> Everything's conjecture and theory, but like you said, that's how that's how you reason these things out. You throw, throw a bunch of theories at the wall and see what sticks. Right. 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 Yeah. Exactly right. Yeah. Absolutely. You don't, you don't have to have everything to, to, to do that. I mean, that's, you can just you can just take what you have and you, you create a theory and you, you, and as time goes by, you, you collect evidence and you add it to it. And it's sometimes that evidence will say, well, no, you, you, you went the wrong direction. Yeah. You either add or subtract based on what right. you right. Course the changes. You do course mm -hmm. changes, you know, yeah. Yeah. Uh, until you get at it. And uh, whatever's on on this this photograph right here can be explained. Uh, it, it it took a good movie of it, you know. It light bounced off of it. It wasn't a wasn't a spook. Uh, so <laughs> it could be explained. <laughs> Just got to get to it, find out what it is. I totally agree. I think that, uh, you know, when you get a bunch of people around like we are, like you said, it basically in a room bouncing ideas off each other. Like I said, you know, not every idea that each one of us has, the other one's going to agree with, but maybe some small part of it, every one of us agrees with, and that you build, start building that case and that right. for that theory up. You know, and, it, and that starts driving everybody down a particular path. Yeah, right. But you'll eventually, you'll eventually go the right way. Uh, once, once everybody begins to to, to hone it, home in on on what the correct uh, direction to go. <clears throat> right. Progress. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Try Trial and error and progress <laughs> so right. go hand in hand. That's why you, you, know, don't, you don't give up. You just you know, keep at it. That's right. Well, Every major scientific breakthrough ever has been from trial and error. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think uh, Thomas Edison, they asked him how he invented the light bulb. He said 15% uh, inspiration and 85% perspiration. <laughs> Well, that's a that's a good quote. I agree. <laughs> we got so much stuff going for us now. You know, we the very fact that we're able to do this when we live so far apart from each other is a, it's a it certainly makes collaboration a lot easier. Yeah, it does. It's like back in the old days when you had to mail everybody, you had to wait for a letter to get back to you. Yeah, uh, to, to, to or pay long distance on phone calls. Amen to that. I, I've read some of Roger Patterson's letter. I got one. Some of his notes, handwritten notes. Mm -hmm. You know, he's just, just a uh, notebook. Yep. <laughs> Write it down. Uh, he, he, you know, he had people's names in it, their phone numbers, you know, uh, mailing address. He, he had a little newsletter he sent out, you know, just keeping the interest up, getting people talking. Uh, that was the the internet of its day. It, it's slow, slow as molasses. If I click something now and it don't happen immediately, 
I think something's wrong. <laughs> Damn, I said my computer's slow. <laughs> well, yeah, and we've talked about this on the show before. You know, back back when all of us really got interested in this, there was no internet to go look look these things up. We had to watch, like you mentioned earlier, in search of. We've talked about that several times. How you know, I know all three of us watched that show at one time or another, mm-hmm. and you know, things like that are what got us interested in it. But you couldn't go after you saw that show. You couldn't go. Oh, I want to know more about that. Let me go type you know you had to go go to the library go through a card catalog which whoever who even uses a card catalog anymore you know the, I used, the I Dec- used primitive google yeah I the used- dewey, De- dewey decimal system but, yeah you know you had right. to get out like you said you had to get out and you had to work for this and you had to like really go and now you just you can sit here at a desk behind a keyboard and you know you can punch up just about all the information that you would ever want to know about this stuff. And you can kind of start researching it without ever even going out in the woods and stepping foot and looking for it. And, you know, I guess that's kind of good in one way that you can find all this information, but it's bad in another way, because, you know, if you don't get out there and experience this stuff for yourself, you're missing out. I agree. I still like getting in the woods. Even if I don't find nothing, a good day in the woods is still just a good day in the woods. Amen. A bad day in the woods is better than a good day behind a desk any day of the week. That is that is a true statement. Yeah, do your walking, and then later you can do your talking about your walking. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. It's uh, walking is the key. Go, get up and go. I've been, I've been all around this country, top to bottom, side to side. Been to all kinds of environments. Um, you know, it's a, uh, it's, it's been besides uh, trying to solve a great mystery. You know, it's probably been rather hell thing to do it's good get to get a good out uh, get fresh air and exercise it's, uh, uh, one thing I wanted to yeah. ask you about is uh, when you were in Bluff Creek you had a, a pretty close encounter where you almost walked up one uh, up on one would you talk about that a little bit yeah uh, it's, it happened about maybe a quarter of a mile from the Patterson film site. And me and two other friends of mine, Don Monroe and Ken Iddens, we crossed the creek that morning and we went up on the mountain directly opposite. And we, uh, we got up there and we found these uh, we found these these uh, culverts that had been thrown down the mountain. I don't know if y'all have ever read about that. That Bigfoot threw these big giant culverts down the mountain. I heard about that. Yeah, we found them. They were still wrapped around trees, uh, and they were big culverts too. I mean, they were heavy and we went on up further and we found this what I call a lair. Uh, it was a, on the side of the mountain, which was a 45 degree slope. It was just flat and it had a waterfall and a little brook coming through there. And the, the bottom of it was carpeted in ferns and there was a deer carcass in there and a whole bunch of tracks. And we knew they'd been in there. In there, they'd been in. The, we saw the sign. So uh, Don and Ken had foot troubles. Ken had a toe missing, a toe bone missing from his childhood. He had polio, and 
Don had some problems with his foot blistering up. And I left them up there, and I went on back down. And I came out in the creek, and I crossed the creek, went down a trail, back up the creek. And I came back out in the creek, was going to wait there until they came down and filmed them coming up the creek. And I was sitting there running. I ran my camera down. I turned and went back upstream and didn't think too much about it. And I got home and a friend of mine uh, had become unemployed. And he said, he told me that he wanted to start a business up selling stock footage. And I told him, I said, well, I have a video that I took in Northern California. It's really pretty scenery and stuff. If you want, you're welcome to use it if you want to. And, and uh, I let him take them home. Well, I didn't see the video. I didn't see the video. And I tried to get that video back. He wouldn't answer his phone, his email. And uh, finally, I got a third party to intervene, and they kind of shamed him and just sent them back to me. And I got that and put it, loaded it. I was going to digitize it because it, I didn't have it in the computer. I just had it on tape. And when I was playing it into the computer, I saw something moving was in the in the shade dark shade i stopped it backed it up and it was a figure and it had some kind of white cloth or light colored cloth or leather or whatever i don't know what it was but it was wrapping something up and I, that's what i saw moving was that light color uh so i I went ahead and put and did, down, uh, downloaded it on the computer, and I put it in my program and brightened it. And then I saw what it was, and uh, a feeling went over me like I've never had because that tape was seven years old before I ever saw it first time, and I felt it was so anticlimactic. To have something like that on tape, and 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 it be seven years old, you know, uh, <laughs> I still feel feel bad about that. I I, uh, I probably won't make that mistake ever again. But uh, I went ahead and and of course I, I published what I find and. Uh, it it it, uh, it 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 is what it is you know it it it's just was a big foot yeah i walked i walked probably within 10 feet of it if you listen to the tape you can hear two rocks clack together clack and that's when it reacted it didn't react to me it never it didn't see me uh i didn't see it the, the, the creek's pretty loud, and uh, when it hurt, when it rocks clapped, it just turned around and backed into the brush. And I took a still picture. My camera would take stills or video, and I, I took some stills, and I've got the, I can see the front of its legs and its feet sticking out of the brush, and, and so it went on up in the brush. And I never knew it, and I, th I thought about it a million times. What would I have done if I had seen it? You know, that close a range? Well, it, you know, I, 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 I couldn't shake his hand. You know, I, I was close enough to, uh, but th there had to be Not enough. <laughs> Look at the time. 
Are we running out of time? No, no, no. It's an old, old running joke. If you oh, get too okay. close to something, our response reaction is, yeah. would you look at the time? Hey, oh, it's yeah. half past. It's half yeah. past. Get the hell out of here. Yeah, and are we hope we was wearing our brown pants that day. Well, uh, <laughs> it, 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 there had to have been another one there to clack the rocks. It, it weren't. The other one took its cue from that rock clack. Uh, it, it it just instantly reacted by backing up in the brush, and uh, so I I, di I didn't even see the other one at all. I don't know where it was, but it probably had something to do with that lair up there and that carcass, deer carcass and stuff. You know, they were in the area. Is what I'm saying. Uh, but that it was. You know, I, I I have to confess that I'm at, at times I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer. None uh, of us are. I uh, just look past the great opportunity. You know, walk right past it. Man, with, within ten feet of it. Ooh. If it had wanted you, it would have got you. Oh, it would have got me. No doubt, I, I wouldn't. No way, I could have got away from it. Mercy. It 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 just it was satisfied watching me go by. That that'll mm -hmm. tell you something there. I didn't see it point blank range. Daylight. Um, I had a question for you. Um. What do you think of the, the missing 411? Do you think some of those could have been cryptid related or do you think there are other explanations? Well, I, I, I'm not really sure because, you know, this, that kind of stuff wasn't looked at really hard in the, in previous years. Uh, Pilates, David Pilates was one of the, I, I'd seen other books. I remember uh, seeing a book that was for sale at a visitor center up in the Smokies, and it was about missing people in the Smokies. Uh, that was many, many years ago. Uh, but David was able to kind of put a Bigfoot type spin on it, mm -hmm. uh, which, uh, it, if Bigfoot is real, we know that certainly he could do that. Right. Uh, he could have done it to me, <laughs> but didn't. Uh, I'm sure they could have made short work of me. Uh, well, you know, different situations, you know, things to react differently. Uh, for example, I've, I've told this story a couple of times. Uh, I was up backpacking with some friends up in Rocky Mountain National, and we rounded a corner, and there was a freaking grizzly on the trail. And I, I play this game with my dog where I reach out and boop him on the nose, and he'll look at me all weird. I could have done that to this bear. I could have reached out and just smacked him right on the nose. I mean, I came almost nose to nose with this thing. And, of course, the guys I was with bravely ran off. Uh, and I was just, like, looking at it and slowly trying to back away. And, and it looked at me, and I looked at it, and it went one way, and I went the other. And it was just, a, you know, one of those, oh, shit, it's a human. Oh, shit, it's a bear kind of reactions. And we went our separate ways. But had it had cubs or if it had been hungry, that would have been a whole different story. Oh, yeah. I had a similar incident with a black bear. It was about like that. I was close, close, close. Uh, I, I was walking looking down at my feet. I had a plastic pipe for a, for a walking stick. And I heard the bear breathing. I looked up, and the bear was walking, looking down at his feet. And when I hollered bear, he looks up at me. <laughs> and and I, our eyes locked. He's I was like, like bear, we, where? We, <laughs> And you know what? For it's hard to explain, but there was a a, a minute there of, of communication when our eyes locked, and I kind of said with my eyes, "You ain't you don't want to do this, do you?" <laughs> and he said no, and he just took off and jumped jumped down the hill. 
<laughs> it was gone. Ooh, man, we, al we almost gave each other a bear hug. <laughs> <laughs> Might have been a pile of scat on both sides. Woo. And, and you know that's why I took it so seriously about this bear being in my neighborhood because I had that experience. And uh, I, bears, <laughs> bears make me edgy. <laughs> that's good reason. For good reason, absolutely, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one of the things, one of the problems we have here in Missouri is feral hogs. And when I'm out on trail, I'm actually more worried about feral hogs than I am bears. Black bears are fairly common here now since they reintroduced them. But feral hogs will kill and eat people. It's happened many times. Yep, yeah, they are. They're, they're voracious. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yep. We have them here, too, but not where I live. Uh, we have them down in the swamps. But it, it's, it's the nearest about eight miles from here. Uh, we, I've never seen one up in the hills, you know, uh, the Delta, big Delta swamps have it. That's, it's from the old Russian, the old Russian uh, uh, boars. Uh, they, they're black with a straight tail, mm -hmm. you know, from that stock. Uh, feral, the regular feral hogs that escaped, you know, later. Some of them will have spots. Some of them be light colored, dark colored, and different colors. But the old Russian stock are always black with a straight tail. And there's some mean things too. They are ornery. They want to. They want to slice and dice. Yeah, absolutely. They get you with them cutters. They're full of the swamps. Are full of. Them. And you know what? A bunch of them got killed during the floods. They a bunch of them drowned, and then they killed a bunch of them. They went down the levees shooting. And you know what? It didn't take six or eight months, and they were right back. Now, those things breed like crazy. I mean it. Well, you, you know, I think I've always, ever since we really started having the feral hog problem, I've always thought, you know, that's a going back to the Boggy Creek thing where it talked about uh the creature taking off hogs i thought you know that's a perfect food source because there's not a state around that's not really having some kind of problem with those things at some in some point or another that's a perfect food source for a big yeah. foot i mean they it's, a, it's plentiful. They yeah but it's pl it's plentiful and like you said they they, they breed like rabbits i mean they're there's always a steady supply of them. I mean, that that's a excellent food source for something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't doubt that they have that they they can do well. Uh, you know, they seem to every every time anybody sees one, they they're thriving. You know, they you don't see a, a, hear them an emaciated bigfoot people. You yeah. know, that <laughs> was sitting on a log starving to death. Uh, they're always doing pretty good. Well, when when you're the you're the biggest baddest thing in your area, I can imagine so. Uh, uh, some researchers feed them. No, uh, I have a friend of mine who's leaving fried apple pies out for them. I, said, I think feeding any any wild animals dangerous. I said, I said, "What are you doing?" He says, "I'm leaving this pie for the bigfoot." I said, don't give that pie to no Bigfoot. I want it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, give him something else. Don't give him the pie. <laughs> give him an apple. <laughs> I'll eat the pie. <laughs> I was just kidding. Uh, yeah. Robert D. says, uh, have you, Big MK, have you seen a Bigfoot? Well, I've seen that one on the film, and I've seen one, uh, what you call the Southern version, in Louisiana uh, at night and it ran across in front of my truck so if you want to count those two I've seen two uh, seen glimpses but I'm sure you're unsure about glimpses All right oh let's see if there's a couple other questions uh, chairman meow uh, says I'm curious if Mr. Davis has gotten any footage of other cryptids, any crawlers. 
I'm not sure what a crawler is. Not off the top of my head, I'm neither, unless he's talking about the rake or something like that. Oh, I'm not sure what he means by crawler. Uh, I haven't seen anything like a rake. I hope I don't. Same here. <laughs> you know, there's some things you just... I'm not, I'm not curious about it. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to run nose to nose with a Wendigo either. <laughs> uh, well, no, no, and and that the Wendigo is like, you know, it's 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 half half physical, half spiritual. Right. You know, it's it's a uh, it's one of the high strangeness type things. Exactly. Where it's a lot of unexplained occurrences go with the Wendigo. Uh, the Wendigo. It's interesting to me that. That, uh, that that Native Americans considered the British to be Wendigos. Really? Yeah, because they had become greedy and be, started grabbing land. Uh, so they, they said they'd become the Wendigo. I can understand the comparison. See, the greed. It's just a different hunger. Yeah, a different hunger at... They, they, they say it can get bad enough to where you will turn into a physical Wendigo. <laughs> That's where they say that the two merge the, the physical and the spiritual. Uh, once that happens, then you've got some, someone on the loose that lusts for human blood. That would be... A, well, that argument, they could say serial killers are Wendigos. Not a good like Wendigo thing. psychosis. If if you uh, have a uh, have that greed or, or you know, lust is kind of like a greed too, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you could turn to, to total wickedness, you know. Yeah. Uh, Hall of Frank Music said, "MK, how did you feel when you looked at the VCR tapes that were given to you?" Well, I, I tell you what, I felt daunted at first because <clears throat> uh, it was a bunch of them, a tub full of them. Uh, I had I went and bought a machine because uh, you know back VCRs were kind of out of vogue, uh, so I bought a machine that would that would convert the v VHS tapes to a, a DVD, and uh, so I. I put them on and watched them as they, it did it and uh, made notes about where each one was on the counter mm -hmm. because you couldn't stop it because it was burning. You know, it was burning to the CD, I mean, the DVD. And then I went back and found each one uh, digitally on, on the digital version. And I loaded it into my programs, and cleaned them up, and uh, did an analysis. So, you know, it it uh, it was work. Uh, but when you see some of the stuff that come out of them, uh, it was I, it was special. Uh, Hall of Frank Music also said the people in Texas who were habituating the Sasquatch are they still doing that? Uh, no, no. Uh, uh, the man that owned the, the land died, and his wife remarried, and her new husband did not want him to. So that's where that's, it all ended. Too bad. Mm. But mm. I'll be honest with you. I thought that they were taking a ri risk because they were. I agree. They were they were uh, it was unknowns all over the place, you know. It, yeah, I think if you keep on messing with them, you you're gonna catch one in a bad mood or something, you yeah. know. Uh, it it I'm 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 I feel real glad that they didn't none of them got hurt. Yeah. I, it's, I think it's dangerous when you when you start associating any wild animal, getting any any wild animal to associate humans with food. Oh yeah, I, they fought the the Bigfoot fought each other over food. <laughs> oh look how many how many cars have been 
smashed and ransacked in Yellowstone by bears that are so used to being fed by car, fed from cars that they're smashing their way into cars to get to look for food. I've been to Yellowstone a time or two. The last time I went was a couple of years ago, and it was real hot. And we didn't see any. We only saw a bison at night, and there wasn't anything out. You know, everybody, everything was laying low. Oh, it was disappointing, but, you know, that's, that's the way animals are. Uh, you know, Yellowstone is a fantastic place. And, and you, ha you, you it's, it's kind of a, a preserve of how this country used to be everywhere out west. And it is, I, we saw bison the first time, bison were walking all every, around everybody. We saw grizzly bears. We saw you know, just almost every kind of animal. Yeah, what a what a beautiful place. Nice place to visit, but you don't want to get tied up with a bear. No, you're going to come out on the short end of the stick. I watched that grizzly bear. It had a cub. And people were stopping and watching the grizzly bear. And the grizzly bear wanted to cross the road. And it was starting to get very agitated. You know, it was doing this back and forth stuff, you know, and uh, it, fr it was frustrating. And I thought to myself that if they kept on preventing that bear from crossing that road, then somebody's going to get in trouble with that bear. Mm -hmm. You know, I could tell it was agitated. That uh, there's there's some animals that, you know, you can't mix with very well with. You better not try. It. So you know that's my thoughts on the uh, habitation thing they were, they were doing there. Is that that they were at risk, and the lady was scared. She was afraid of. Her husband was doing most of it, and she prepared food, and they would put the food out there. Mm. And, uh, you know, to me, it's just, you just, so it's going to go south on you sooner or later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And especially like you just said, you know, any, any mama bear with a cub, they're going to be even more yeah. aggressive than they would be naturally. Uh, mm -hmm. cause they're, they're getting that mama bear on, they're going to be protective of that cub. And so any encounter that maybe if you encountered them by themselves, wouldn't be, wouldn't end badly. Mm -hmm. Definitely going to end in a bad way if they got a cub with them. Yeah, you're right, and and there, you can't you can't have a lightweight encounter. It's going to be it's going to be all muscles and claws, and you know if it starts, that's the way it's going to end. That's right, and and you ain't going to be on the on the up end of it. You're going to be you're going to be uh, you're going to be bear poop. I got a bear skull right here. Don Monroe sent that to me. They f he found it out there in Montana. He painted it white and shipped it to me. But uh, it don't have all the teeth. The nippers are missing. Got these two big ones right there. It don't really look that big in the unfleshed way. And it may have been a smaller bear. Can you hold that up? Oh, I'm sorry. I wasn't holding it too bad. <laughs> I was like, you got a bear skull, but we can't see it. I was holding there's it. Some big old, there's some big old teeth. Yeah. Boy, that, you don't know they can bury the things up in you. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be big enough if it was up close and personal, Mr. Davis. That's for sure. Yeah, that'll, that'll do the trick. I studied this thing for a while because if I figured if that bear jumped out of the woods, then I'm not need to know exactly where I needed to hit him <laughs> in my one in my one swing. <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
man. Yeah. That's as close as I want to get to one is holding the skull in my hand. That's it. I'm right there with you. Yeah. I hope it don't I hope it don't attract one. Boys, <laughs> we are after the two hour mark. Uh, we generally only go about two hours. Uh, we'll start wrapping things up. Okay. Mr. Davis, thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, you are a fountain of information. And I want to get you back on again here probably in the next month or two, if you're willing. Well, I promise I'll be more prepared next time. I'm sorry about <laughs> that. You were, uh, you were very well prepared. Yeah, uh, we, is, we enjoyed yeah. hearing you talk, and, and you're a wealth of information. Yeah, if this is unprepared, I, I, I'd love to see you when you are prepared because uh, this yep. has been awesome. We appreciate you being here with us and hanging out. Yeah, thank you. Very informative. Yes, sir. Did very informative. Absolutely. Um, well, it's, it's, yeah, we it's surpri surprising how much, uh, how big the body of knowledge is on Bigfoot. You know, uh, there's more evidence than people realize. It's, it's a lot more. Sure is. We, we discussed some of it tonight, the hair and all that. Mm -hmm. I, that's all very relevant. Key very. Is, it, it's a key that opens a door. Right. right. You know, once you understand that that hair, what it does, then you, you a little light goes on, you know, about some of the things you observed. Well, you know that uh, that the uh, that footage you showed of it just stopping and kind of disappearing. To me, that just absolutely validates what we're saying about the hair. You see him take that yep. camera down. He could he couldn't see it anymore. He said, "Jesus, it's gone." You know, it just disappeared right in front of his eyes. Mm -hmm. And he didn't pick it back up until it moved. That thing was just sitting there staring at him. Yeah, and if he had cut, got any closer, it might have been a bad day. Might have been a very bad day. Yes, sir. Four one one. Yeah, he could have been in David Pilates book. Very good. Very well. Very well could have. That's, That's the last um, place I want to end up. <laughs> that is an absolute yeah. fact. Um, MK, I, again, I want to thank you for coming on the show. We're I'm going to get with you, touch base with you here in the next week or two, and see if we can set up another date to have you on in in the near future. Um, you know, I, I, I've thoroughly enjoyed having you on. It has been an amazing conversation. We've had wonderful attendance tonight. Uh, a lot of people asking some very, very awesome questions. Oh, yes. uh, folks, don't, folks, don't forget to check our affiliates, uh, Scallywag Tactical. Uh, you know, if you if you're needing a good, a good knife out in the field, Scallywag Tactical is probably some of the best knives in the business. I love every one of their knives I've got. And if you go to ScallywagTactical.com and use discount code T A D A Roberts ten, you'll get ten percent off your entire order. And also, if you're going to be in the field, don't forget that a, a good weapon is not the only thing you should have at hand, but you should carry a good med kit. And uh, the good folks over at Dark Angel Medical, uh, Pocket Doc Davis here, um, he can tell you. In fact, I'll let him let him tell you guys a little bit about Dark Angel before we start wrapping things up. Doc, go ahead. Well, uh, appreciate it, man. Uh, yeah, it, like DA said, whether you're out in the field or whether you're at home or uh, just driving to work, uh, head over to darkangelmedical.com and check out our selection of kits. Anyway, anything from a boo-boo kit all the way up to a mass casualty kits and in, all things in between. Uh, and if you order, use Cryptid25. That'll give you 25% off your order. That's our biggest discount code we get uh, or we give. And that's is our, our way of saying thank you. And if you put in Team Odin or anything like that in the order notes, I'll throw in a little Team Odin rocker in there, in there for you. And if you ever use one of our kits to save yourself or somebody else, just let us know. And uh, we will replace what you have used absolutely 100% free of charge. That's called our kit for life guarantee. And I uh, just got word today that one of my constable buddies in, in Williamson County, Texas, uh, one of my students has used a kit to save uh, a shooting victim's life. And so we are at 163 confirmed saves. Or at now. That is awesome, Doc. Yeah, that's pretty, that that's awesome. pretty cool. So get you a kit and get trained. We offer training all over the United States. And uh, the big thing is just be prepared. Uh, because, Absolutely. Uh, hope is a crap strategy. That's for sure. That is a fact. 
again, folks, thank you guys for spending your evenings with, with us. MK has been an amazing guest. We are definitely going to get him back on the show. Uh, we got so many more topics we can talk about, and I want to go into more detail about about the the the, uh, the clear hair shafts and 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 visit visit some of the more famous cases uh, of Bigfoot sightings across the country. Uh, so you know, definitely be watching in the near future. We will have MK back on the show uh, again. Thank you guys for for everything. Thank you for checking out uh, checking out everything that Dark Angel and, and Scalawag Tactical have. Uh, remember, those are both veteran-owned companies, and we are more than proud to support our veteran-owned businesses here at DAX Machina. So uh, with all the new people who have joined the channel tonight, I want to say a big thank you. Uh, welcome to the DAX Machina Nation. Uh, we go live every Wednesday and Saturday night at 8 p.m. Central Time. Uh, so if you're uh, on the East Coast, that would put it at 9 p.m. your time. If you're on the West Coast, it would be 6 p.m. your time. Uh, but uh, we go live every Wednesday and Saturday. And uh, we, we're going to continue to try to bring amazing guests like MK and others to, to so they can come in and share their wealth of knowledge. And MK has just been an absolute wonderful wealth of knowledge. Again, thank you so much, MK, for joining us. I uh, hope you guys hope yes. you guys have enjoyed this show as much as we've had. We have and we've had an amazing time. Um, and again, check out our check out our uh, affiliates. Uh, if you want, if you uh, are interested in in my book series, you can check out everything I've got written currently over at daroberts.net, uh, or you can help shape the future of the DA verse over at Patreon.com/daroberts/author. So again, thank you guys for being with us. Thank you for spending this wonderful e Wednesday evening with us, and uh, we will have the show up uh, for Saturday night, probably sometime tomorrow. Uh, so watch for that, and we hope to see you guys then. So, again, thank you, everybody that's involved. MK, thank you very much, and I hope you guys have a wonderful night. Good night, everybody. Good night, guys. Thank you for joining us. Catch us again Wednesdays and Saturdays on DAX Machina. A special thanks to all our channel members and Patreon supporters. Please make sure to like, share, and subscribe.